In this video, we're going to continue our code that uses the animation timer. So the animation timer allows us to execute code uh, kind of at semi-regular intervals. And previously, we had set it up so that we had this list of enemies and a player. And we set up the animation timer so that it moved the enemy towards the player. We gave both the enemy and the player some speeds. We had to keep track of the last time that the timer was called so that we would know how long it was between them. And then we move the enemy by an amount that depends upon their speed. And it should actually depend upon, oh, that's why this was moving so darn fast with the, the 20. Because we didn't actually divide or in include the time in here times delta that will make it scale with seconds that would explain why it was going so fast because it was just moving however many pixels there we go so that's 20 pixels per second which is actually pretty darn slow uh, we'll have to see how this goes and as I said earlier it's adjustable to make things more interesting or harder <clears throat> that might look really slow to you but imagine when you have 10 of those and you're trying to avoid all of them okay so I wanted to next make it so that the player could be moved using keyboard input and I promised that I would make it so that the player could move along diagonals now previously we've made our things move whether it was a player or whatever using the keyboard by doing something like on key pressed and setting that equal to a key event I'm probably going to have to do another import to do this because the key event is inside of input okay so this code is going to execute every time that the key is hit. And we have had code that actually makes changes. So for example, I check if e.code is equal to keycode.left, then I might take the player dot center x equals player dot center x dot value minus something okay this is this would have done direct changes in there we can run that see if I've gotten everything imported properly and I can move the player this way you'll note the enemy changes there are two problems with this one is that doing it this way I don't get diagonals. I'm getting the key pressed is coming through from one key at a time. It's also not tied to the clock, which means that I can't really have precise control over the player's speed. The player's speed here is going to be set by how big of a number I use there and the re repeat rate of the player's keyboard. So every machine might have the player moving at a different speed. And I'd really like to avoid that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce four bars when I type in the first one you'll probably see what these are doing they're keeping track of whether or not various keys are pressed so any of the keys that we want to react to inside of the animation timer we will have bars that store whether or not they are being held down and those all start off as false and so then here instead of actually changing the players location all I do is I say that left is pressed if it was a right instead or an up or a down I set the appropriate boolean value now whoops sorry 
equals true. Put spaces in there. Append. Append true. So whenever it gets a pressed key, it sets it to true. That would make it true all the time, unless I also have some way of making it false. And so let's copy those six lines. In addition to an on key pressed, I'm going to react to released. And I'm going to have it so every time that a key is released, it's set to false. Now given that, I can come down here and inside of the timer, I can have checks. If left pressed, now I'm going to move the player. And I'm going to, so the player dot center x equals player dot center x dot value. And because I'm going left, I'm going to subtract from that player speed. Let's go ahead and let's put in a carriage return here. I'm going to put that on a separate line. I should probably put in some curly braces. Player speed times the delta. So however many pixels we're allowed to move per second multiplied by how many seconds this was, that's how much my center position will change. Copy those three lines, paste it three times. We want to have one for right, up, and of course down. Right should increase the player's x, up should decrease the player's y, down should increase the player's y, and we need to change these things to y's. Okay, let's see if that is happier. So I can move up, and note when I hold multiple keys, I can move diagonally. If I come up here, we'll actually be able to see that I am moving faster than the enemy. Actually, when you move diagonally, you both move a little bit faster than you're supposed to. But I can outrun the enemy, basically. Not by all that much. And so if I were to start throwing in other enemies, we might have some problems. In order to do that, this will be probably the last thing that we do here. Uh, actually, I'll come back and I'll do that in another video because I would also like to have a check so that if the enemy overlaps with the player, we say that the uh, player has died and we get to stop the timer. So we'll come back and do that in another video.